In this presentation, we are going to explore the difficulty of flying conventional aircraft designs on hydrogen. One of the principles which causes this difficulty is the maximum zero fuel mass of an aircraft. This presentation contains the following subjects. An introduction in maximum aircraft masses, the meaning of the maximum zero fuel mass, limitations and payload restrictions due to the maximum zero fuel mass, and an investigation of a false claim due to insufficient knowledge of the maximum zero fuel mass. If you look up the maximum weights in a flight crew operating manual for an aircraft, you will find four values. They are usually expressed in kilograms or pounds. In descending order they are the maximum taxi mass, the maximum takeoff mass, the maximum landing mass and the maximum zero fuel mass. Here is an example of the Airbus A310-200. The first three are all pretty straightforward, but the last one is not so clear and plays a big role in hydrogen powered aircraft. So what is this limitation? The maximum zero fuel mass is the maximum mass due to the maximum bending and shear forces in the wing fuselage construction. Let me explain. When we load an aircraft with payload, like cargo and passengers, they will be seated or stored in the fuselage of the aircraft. This will lead to a higher weight of the fuselage, which is represented by the magenta arrows. This payload in the fuselage will have to be lifted by the wing. This is represented by the blue arrows on top of the wing. The distribution of the lift along the wingspan is more or less elliptical. This will lead to a certain bending of the wing. The magnitude of this bending moment is the highest at the wing fuselage construction. If you put more and more mass in the fuselage, represented here by the yellow arrows, the wing has to produce more and more lift and this will result in an increase of the bending forces in the wing fuselage construction. At a certain moment these bending forces are at their maximum value for safe flight and hence you have arrived at the maximum zero fuel mass. Above this mass you are not allowed to take any payload on board an aircraft anymore. But as the name maximum zero fuel mass implies, you are still allowed to take fuel. Why is this? The reason for this is that jet fuel is not going to be stored in the fuselage, but in the wings of the aircraft. Of course also here we need more lift to carry this fuel, but it does not add to the bending and shear forces in the wing fuselage construction, because the weight of the fuel is lifted at exactly the same place where the lift is produced. They cancel each other out. So how do we load a conventional aircraft? This can at best be illustrated with the so-called mass range diagram. Here the maximum weights are on the vertical axis and the range you can fly are on the horizontal axis. The only mass you are not familiar with yet is the operator empty mass OAM. This is just the empty mass of the aircraft without any payload and fuel. First we add the payload. This can be passengers with baggage and or cargo. How much payload we can take with us is limited by the maximum zero fuel weight, because passengers and cargo go into the fuselage. Thereafter we load the reserve fuel. 
which is the fuel to divert to your alternate airport plus 30 minutes final reserve. Finally, we load the trip fuel, which is the fuel required to fly from departure to destination. Of course, the further we fly, the more trip fuel is required. On a certain moment, we have reached the maximum takeoff mass of the aircraft, and the range where this happens is the optimum range of the aircraft. Here we can fly the maximum distance with a full payload. The optimum range is an important parameter for an airline. If you have selected a route to fly and you want to buy an aircraft for this route, you want the optimum range of this aircraft as close as possible to the distance you want to fly. We have, however, not yet reached the maximum tank capacity of the aircraft. So it is still possible to take on fuel. But because we have reached the maximum takeoff mass, we have to reduce the payload. There is just no other way. On the moment we have reached the maximum tank capacity, we can't take on any fuel anymore and we've reached the maximum range of the aircraft. If the aircraft uses all the fuel on board, including the reserve fuel, we have reached the emergency range of the aircraft. Let's do an example of a flight between Amsterdam Airport and Milan Linate Airport. To the left you see the maximum masses of the Airbus A310-200 and to the right you see the amount of trip fuel and reserve fuel. I have omitted the maximum taxi mass because it's almost never limiting. The question to be answered is what is the maximum payload we are allowed to carry and what is its limiting mass? As this distance is far below the optimum range of this aircraft of around 3000 nautical mile, we don't need all that much trip fuel and we can take the maximum amount of payload which in this case is the maximum zero fuel mass minus the operator empty mass, which is 33,447 kilograms. So the maximum zero fuel mass is the payload limiting factor. On top of that, we add the reserve fuel of 5,660 kilograms which keeps us nicely below the maximum landing mass of the aircraft. And last but not least, we add the trip fuel, which keeps us nicely below the maximum takeoff mass of the aircraft. The actual landing mass is 117,160 kg and the actual takeoff mass is 123,550 kg. This is the claim which is made by High Point with installation of the GTL ultralight liquid hydrogen tank. The range of a Dash 8 Q300 with 50 to 56 passengers is to increase from 1558 kilometers to 4488 kilometers. That's almost an increase of three times the range. Is this claim true? Here are the maximum weights of this aircraft. Let's look at the weight range diagram for further analysis. Hydrogen tanks do not fit into the wings of the aircraft, which this picture clearly shows, because they are simply too big. That means they have to be placed into the fuselage and as a consequence they are bound by the maximum zero fuel mass of the aircraft and not the maximum takeoff mass of the aircraft. Let's assume the GTL tank fits in the tail of the aircraft and does not occupy a part of the cabin, although there is no mention of this. This is the mass range diagram of this aircraft with jet fuel. 
we can see that we can take a maximum of 6290 kg of payload up to an optimum range of around 1500 km and we need 1680 kg of fuel for this with legal reserves. But here we already hit the first problem with hydrogen. The hydrogen tank does not fit into the wing and it is situated in the fuselage. The hydrogen tank itself weighs 67 kg and it can contain 150 kg of liquid hydrogen. So the total weight is 217 kg. This means our payload has reduced from 6290 to 6073 kg. Standard weight of a passenger is according the International Air Transport Association 84 kg. And they are allowed 20 kg of baggage. So with 56 passengers that amounts to 5,824 kilograms. We were allowed 6,073 kilograms of payload, so we have 249 kilograms left, which just about fits. But the question here is, how far can we fly on 150 kilograms of hydrogen? So on one GTL hydrogen tank. Let's first take a look at the efficiency of a fuel cell powered aircraft with propellers in comparison to a standard turboprop aircraft. A fuel cell powered aircraft has a 44% efficiency and a turboprop aircraft has a 39% efficiency. 44 divided by 39 is 1.13, so 13% more efficient. So the question here is, can we fly the optimum range with 150 kg of liquid hydrogen? Liquid hydrogen delivers 33.3 kWh of energy per kilogram, which is the lower heating value of hydrogen. So 150 kg of hydrogen delivers 4,995 kWh of energy. Jet fuel delivers 11.9 kWh per kilogram. So 1680 kg of jet fuel delivers 19,992 kWh of energy. So to fly the maximum range of 1500 km with 150 kg of hydrogen, the aircraft has to be 4 times or 400% more efficient. As a fuel cell is only 13% more efficient than a turboprop, this is not a valid claim. We can't even make it to the current optimum range of 1500 km. But people would say, hey Bernard, are you not forgetting the weight reduction of the aircraft? And they're right. So let's have a look at the weight reduction. Without going into detail, but trust me on this, the drag of an aircraft in cruise is linear proportional with the weight of the aircraft, and so is the required thrust and the fuel flow. For the aviation geeks I put in the formula. So the actual takeoff mass reduces with hydrogen from the maximum takeoff mass of around 19,600 kg minus the mass of the jet fuel of 1680 kg plus the mass of the hydrogen and its tank. That's a total of 18,137 kg. That is 18,137 divided by 19,600 is 0.93, or in other words a 7% reduction in fuel flow due to the lower weight. And I'm being generous here because the weight difference will reduce during the flight. So in total the hydrogen aircraft is 7 plus 13, 20% more efficient, but certainly not more than 400% efficient. 
So this is not a valid claim. Well, how much hydrogen is required then for 1500 kilometers range? Well, this is not difficult to calculate by looking at the energy required. 1680 kilograms of jet fuel delivers 19,992 kilowatt hour of energy. As a hydrogen plane is 20% more efficient than a turboprop, this requires 15,993 kilowatt hours of energy with hydrogen. 15,993 kilowatt hours of hydrogen requires 480 kilograms of hydrogen. This is actual four GTL hydrogen tanks. This will reduce the number of passengers significantly due to their size. It is estimated that these large hydrogen tanks, with either compressed hydrogen or liquid hydrogen, reduce the payload of an aircraft for the same range by 15 to 20 percent, which sounds about right. Their claim of 1,500 kilometers is already incorrect. How about the claim of 4,488 kilometers? For 4,488 kilometers, we would need three times as much hydrogen as for 1,500 kilometers. For 1,500 kilometers, we required 480 kilograms of hydrogen. So 3 times 480 is 1,463 kilograms of hydrogen. And that is 9.6 or 10 GTL hydrogen tanks. This can only be stored in the fuselage and will reduce the payload capacity significantly. So it is impossible to carry 56 passengers 1,500 kilometers and certainly not 4,488 kilometers. My estimation is that 10 GTL hydrogen tanks will at least take up half the cavern space. So this is a totally incorrect claim. For more unbiased scientific information on hydrogen, check our website at h2sciencecoalition.com.